Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre- and post-show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash cubsoutloud. Thanks to all our patrons for their support in making this podcast. Sunday, September 30th, 2023. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. And welcome to Comes Out Loud's Bear Podcast of Indeterminal Length, episode number 704. And it's part two of our state fair. So I hope you enjoyed last week's show, however that went. This week will be better, I promise. <laughs> well, so you say, Gary. No, I guarantee it. I know absolutely this week is better than, than last week. If you say so. It will all make sense in due time. <laughs> of course it will. But this week we're continuing our State Fairs 2023. This time... We're going to the home state of my mother. Oh, where my uh, grand grandpa Briggs and grandpa Briggs lived. We would drive from Rochester. We would sometimes meet them halfway in Toma, and we would stop at the Hardee's there and have lunch. And then the, the, my grandparents would would take me home with them. Well. Well, my parents went home to their home. It's, I'd spend a week with Grandma and Grandpa Briggs. It was great. Also, Life I was... went to college in Wisconsin. The University of Wisconsin River Falls. The same place that my parents went to college and met. Also, is where my sister went to college. Anyways, enough reminiscing. Gary, what what's what is coming to the State Fair of Wisconsin? So yeah, uh, this go round, as you were saying, we're going to go back to Wisconsin, which we actually covered last year. Um, and this time around, we've got pictures. <gasps> Look at that right down there. So the we can actually see the food. That's why this week is better. So uh, <laughs> in just a few days, Wisconsin uh, State Fair is August 3rd through the 13th, and they've already posted their foods. Uh, this is a selection of some of the items, but not all of them. These happen to be the ones that kind of stand out, uh, okay. but there will be more things. So we're going to have several links on our uh, blog podcast uh, website. One of them will be all the new foods, and then these are some of them uh, out of the list, because I think there's quite a few like several dozen so we're yeah. not going through all of them we're just going to yeah. go through some okay so yeah that being the case uh the very first one coming up is from the vendor called exotic meat grill and That's the big. item which is not exotic necessarily nor meat nor grilled <laughs> i sure hope it's not grilled <laughs> Is called the Atomic Slush. Quote unquote, or uh, it's referenced as the world's hottest slush. Considering wow. the color, this reminds me of certain things that my mom would occasionally add into her applesauce. I grew up with that. We, When I was a kid, infamously in my dad's family, we had pink applesauce is what it was called. Mm. So you would always just take regular applesauce and you would put the cinnamon heart candies in it. 
and cook them down and it would turn the applesauce pink and give it a slightly like spiced but very much cinnamon flavor mm-hmm. and it's still a thing to this day that the family like has carried on so this though yeah. is not that well <laughs> so it says uh this cinnamon slush is made with carolina reaper powder ouch Yes, my butthole is not happy reading yep. that. <laughs> <laughs> the minute it said, I was like, and Damon's out. I'm out. It's like, tap out. like total digestive system from, yeah. from the start to the, to the end. Yeah. Continue. Um, yeah, it has uh, topped with whipped cream, spicy caramel sauce, and spicy candy pieces. So it is just spice on spice on spice. Drink if you dare. And I love how it has in like parentheses, caution, spicy. I see. <laughs> no shit, Sherlock. It, it, like... it, 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 it doesn't just say spicy. It says spicy. Because it's all yeah. in caps. Fair. Yeah, like, so I'm not sure why we have to make the caramel sauce spicy. Like, the cream isn't spicy. Right. And the cream helps counteract the 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 Carolina Reaper powder, like the capsaicin concept. So I'm like the spicy candies pieces. I kind of get, but the caramel sauce, I'm like, you could have just left it plain. Yeah. That would have been fine. Like it's already spicy enough. We don't, I think need to really do more. Well, it's supposed to be world's hottest slush. So maybe they were just kind of amp up that like heat factor. Like, Oh, you think you're going to get a reprieve from the caramel? No. No, you're not. No, we're yeah. just going to add the spice in there too, and we're going to add the spice in the in the in the slush itself. And you know, on top of that, we're going to throw some you know, spicy candies on top. So, like, like if you if you oh, want spicy, you're going to get spicy. But yeah. no, I I am I, this mm, no, this is not touching my lips. I'm not gonna if you if you get it, guess what? You're eating all of it. I no. <laughs> Y'all have fun with this shit. I I don't I don't really like red hots. Like that is mm. like that's enough for me. And, and if I'm getting a slush, the reason I'm getting a slush is to cool down. Right. This is the opposite of that. Yeah. This is not gonna cool me down. Well, I guess it's gonna make me sweat more, but that's about it. That's yeah. the, that's the thing. In in some of the hotter climes of the world, they eat spicier food because it helps them stay cool. It's strange, but it's true. Well, and I think part of it I is think, because it makes you sweat. Well, when yeah. I think of hotter climes, I do not think of Wisconsin. Huh. <laughs> Give it a couple decades. I mean, climate I mean, change is they, underway. Uh, they they are they they do have uh, uh, the entirety of uh, Lake, Lake Michigan across one of their borders, and a small portion of their northwestern border uh, has Lake Superior. So they're kind of surrounded by a very humid climate. And they're right next to Minnesota. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I mean, I will say, does it look appetizing? Yes. I mean, if you don't know what it is, oh. It's a, it's a red fruity looking beverage thing. Yep. Looks nope. can be deceiving. Although you could say that peppers are fruits. Technically, yes, but it, it, it looks like Hawaiian fruit punch. Yeah. Red. So it's very misleading. Deception. And if I was a very mean uncle. I would have little children take a sip. <laughs> a sip. And watch them be tortured. But anyways. <laughs> just say it. Okay. I am an uncle. I could try it. Sadly, <laughs> sadly the eldest is, I think, 12. Or youngest is, like, 12. Yeah. So. Okay. So that's uh, item number one. Of okay. the of the new foods in this particular list, uh, item number two, from Richie's Cheese Curd Tacos, is a brat and kraut cheese curd taco. <sighs> this kind of feels like that saying: "Just because you sh- can doesn't mean you should." And don't get me wrong, <laughs> would I eat this? Yes. 
because I am <laughs> German and I am an American <laughs> and the concept of bastardizing like uh, misappropriating other cultural foods to make it our own because that's what Americans do. I totally get that. So I'm like, okay, so I take a crispy taco shell that's been deep fried with bites of Johnsonville brats, cheddar cheese curds, and sauerkraut topped with a beer and brat mustard. I'm like, eh, okay. Like, couldn't you say the typical preparation for a bratwurst essentially is a taco? Well, I mean, if you're eating like in a bun, kind of. Yeah, but isn't that the traditional method of? Well, I, I, yeah. Yeah, I mean, technically, I think most Americans would, and maybe Germans, I don't know, would think of like a bratwurst in a bun. I be, yeah, I could be completely wrong about this whole traditional <laughs> thing, but That's fine. I, sh I should say normally when I think about a bratwurst, I think about eating it just like a hot dog, you know? Yeah, right. In the bun, it's a, the only difference is that the, instead of a bun, it's a taco shell. The instead of having the full brat, it's cut up into pieces. Yeah, yeah, that part confuses me slightly. Well, it's it would be harder. I think it, to that eat makes it more than taco. Yeah, and I think it's more uh, more taco like. Fair. Well, if I if you were going to go that far, I would say de-skin the brat and chop it up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's a, so it's kind of mimicking ground meat. Uh, uh -huh. If you that's really fair. try to play up the taco aspect, so that's where yeah. I'm like, I like like flavor profile wise, I'm like, oh, okay, crunchy flour shell, cheese curd, I'm down with that. Like, I have no problem with sauerkraut and a brat. And the, and the beer mustard thing. I'm like, eh, okay. Like, all of it conceptually makes sense. Um, I personally am not a crunchy taco fan. <laughs> because crunchy tacos shatter and, like, make a big fucking mess. And I don't like that about food. Like, yeah, I, I, I don't like food that falls apart. And then I have to kind of put it back together. Or I need a utensil to finish eating the handheld thing. Like, that is a pet peeve of mine. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> So that's why I like soft tacos. Personally. I mean, if you consider your fingers utensil. Well, well people... usually there's like shredded lettuce and sauce and like just there's just a gloppy mess of whatever that like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. The, this is this is interesting. I'm I'm on the fence. I don't mm, I don't I I like the idea and concept and theory and looking at the picture i'm kind of like maybe mm -hmm. but it's 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 also weirdly like maybe a little too much there's like you said it's this smash of like different flavor of different like um cuisines right but not quite it's it's it feels like they took German food and threw it in a taco, right? And... They just changed the form of a of a regular taco, except for so. Here's my problems with it. My problems are the cheese curds because in this application, cheese curds I don't think are necessarily appropriate. Hmm. That's fair. That's a really good uh, point. Yeah. I just don't like sauerkraut. And I don't like the fried flour. A flour turkey. I'm, I'm not the a fried fan. Flour I'm also here. not a fan of the. Yes. And, I mean, if the, if the cheese curds were melty, mm -hmm. it would be better. But I think there's better methods to have melted cheese. So. You know what? Looking at this, and this is going to sound terrible, I would like this better as a burrito. If we're going to go mm. this route, I would prefer this as a burrito. Screw the fried flour tortilla. Just have yeah. a regular tortilla and wrap it. Yeah. Just have it in a regular tortilla, wrap it. If you want that crunchiness from, say, like the hard taco shell, then like take bits of tortilla strips and like throw it in with the sauerkraut and cheese curds and right. that part. Yeah. If if you're a person who has dined on the Taco Bell slop that we all love, 
you know that the fried tortilla strips in a burrito yeah. are the weirdest, like, <laughs> best thing because you're eating, like, basically a big soft tube of goo and and there's something crunchy in it. <laughs> So <laughs> I hear David on the, I hear David on the, like, if you want crunch, like just put some tucked to tortilla strips. Yeah. In yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind it in that, in that capacity. Cause then the, like Jeff was saying with like the chunks of, of rot, that makes more sense in the burrito to me mm-hmm. than in this taco, hard taco show. I feel like this is going to immediately, I mean, it, the way it's served, if this is the picture that we're getting, it's obviously being served in like a something that can hold it. It's this is not a street taco like walking around with it, or maybe you could, but you're walking with it and like having like a right, receptacle right. for stuff to fall into because it's going to break. Right. This is going to shatter. Um, Again, we come to to the the problem with the uh, hard shell tacos. Yeah, which don't get me wrong, I yeah. like. Now, if they did this Jack in the Box style, one, I would hate it more because I hate, I think, the, <laughs> the, the Jack in the Box uh, uh, tacos are the worst things ever. And here's here's one of the reasons why. Because Jack in the Box doesn't just fry their shells. They fry the whole freaking thing. Yes. Which would be okay for cheese curds because you'd be frying the cheese curds, which would cause them to get much more melty and soft and everything. Right. But the one thing yeah. you think about when you think of like cheese curds, you think of the the like rubberiness. Right. 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 There's a there's a toothsomeness to cheese curds and kind of makes them squeaky. Right. Uh-huh. So that's the appeal. I mean, they're not really my preferred. Thing. What like, the even fuck on poutine, I would prefer they replace the, the cheese curds with like cheese cubes <sighs> or something like that. Cheese chunks. Are you jumping ahead, Damon? I have jumped ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree. So I feel like the the brat and kraut cheese curd taco, we all agree is okay conceptually, but we have we have. We like, have notes. It's, have a, no, it's kind of like a, a we have edits. It's, it's not quite a thumbs down it's a kind of a thumbs down, uh, like probably a little more down than to the side so i suppose it would be like a, a, a <laughs> two out of five so Back. five four three two one right <laughs> Back to your drawing board i think it's it, it, it needs a it needs a revision it needs a it needs a redo i think i I genuinely think if it was a burrito, I'd be more apt for it. Yeah, I but... think you've gotten an idea here. Mm-hmm. I think if we New took a poll and fun. surveyed people after they ate it and asked very specific questions targeting on our points, people would agree with us that there's there's room for improvement. <laughs> because like beer and brat mustard, the brats, I love brats. Uh, cheddar cheese just in general that's great yeah i'm just yeah. it's it's just me it's a me thing uh sauerkraut the sauerkraut on there is fine makes sense that's typically put onto a bratwurst yeah it's fine it's not your thing and i'm okay with it being in a tortilla but probably better if it wasn't a fried one and it was wrapped yeah. in it yeah it's, right but... okay all righty next up from Verst bar is the beer cheese Wisconsin lava cake. Now, I think the title is a little misleading. Absolutely. Because that's where um, I went. You heard me. I went, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's where my mind went. Right. Just I don't think it's a thing. cake. I think it's where they went a little sideways. So it's a savory take on a sweet classic. It says, this is a salted Milwaukee pretzel company slider bun. That has been filled with famous beer cheese soup, topped with butter and pretzel salt, and drizzled with house-made hot honey and red pepper flakes. And this, of of the items on the list, this is one of those, like, take my money now. <laughs> like, that's me and the meme, because the concept of carbs with melty cheese and salt and a little bit of spice I'm like, okay, that yeah. speaks yeah. to me. 
I would call it a lava roll or a lava bun. I wouldn't call it a cake yeah. because I think it's misconstrued that people are thinking of like chocolate lava cake. And I'm like, well, but this isn't a cake. It's a bun. Yeah. Like it's a yeah. slider. I, th- I think yeah. that's the failing on this is the, the word cake. Yeah. The cake takes you immediately out of out of it. Like and that's where like I saw the picture and then I went, Oh, that's that's good. That I like. <laughs> I, I that I, think, I like. Yeah, I think like the like, hey, you know the chocolate lava cake? We could do this to that to it, but at some point here you've basically no longer made a cake. So keeping the lava, calling it like bun. I like bun. I think because like I think I've I've seen pretzel buns, which are kind of like have the mm-hmm. pretzel crusty type mm-hmm. thing, right? With, yeah. Meaning like soft pretzel, yeah, right. Versus uh, and pork pretzels. So, and this is to me, I I like the flavors of this, and this would be one where I wouldn't I would probably take off the red pepper pepper flakes only because it also has the hot honey and i'm not a big i'm not a big spice person that's me personally so i think you bring up a good point david because in the picture the red pepper flakes are pretty sizable so uh-huh. you can easily see them to remove it so i agree i also think because it's drizzled over top i wouldn't be surprised if you could ask them to not yeah like, if you could tell them, you know, at the food truck or stand or whatever and be like, can I get it without the spice? So it's uh-huh. just, like, the slider with the cheese and the salt. Uh-huh. Like, yeah. And, and Our... maybe, maybe they could, maybe they also have just not uh, honey available for you yeah. to swap it out. I can see that being, that would be nice. If they if the hot honey, I, wouldn't, I would be fine with one or the other. I'll put it like that. Either the red pepper flakes or the hot honey. I prefer the hot honey only because I can, I like that that sweet heat, right. as it were. Yeah. Um, but this sounds, if we're doing like this, this is like, this is this is four out of five for me. Yeah. I would call this five out of five, uh, mainly because the hot the the red pepper flakes, red hot pepper flakes, at least to me aren't that hot they provide the 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 spicy sensation but it's not like it's like burning my mouth or anything yeah not much heat to it but it does have the bite yeah so uh, I, i'm gonna stick with the five out of five i wish i could eat it <laughs> yeah i i'm i'm with jeff i think it's a five out of five for me i i hear you damon like i think it's modifiable so yeah. i think if you can request like no heat but, or less heat. But, and I will say, looking at that picture, like you said, I want that in my mouth. Like, <laughs> like that looks delicious. Somebody clip like that. some men on the internet. Can somebody clip that. Clip that. <laughs> maybe, maybe when I edit this show, I need to cut it out and try to make one of those YouTube shorts. <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on. Here's here's a potentially uh, decisive one. So from all things jerky, they apparently have cotton candy jerky. It says it's a new twist on a favorite fair food. Cotton candy jerky is an old fashioned beef jerky flavored with cotton candy. The sweet, salty jerky is sure to please fair goers of all ages. And this picture does it no justice. It's just beef jerky sitting on a piece of cotton candy. I'm like, um, um, that's a no for me, dog. Like, <laughs> this. So Jeff says no. He gives it either a zero or a one. It's a I, thumbs it's, down. It's, it's a complete thumbs down. It's like a. Uh, uh, triple thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> this does not appeal to me. I want, I don't, I, I, who thought of this and who thought this would be a really good idea? Here's the I, thing I, I could see people I, liking this. For me, thing. it's 
And I, I wouldn't call it an abomination. I would just think it's a bad idea. <laughs> well, to follow up David's question on who, my question is, how high were they? Because <laughs> this really strikes me as a, I'm going to mash up foods. Hey, we're at a fair. I think it tastes... Right, right. So, yeah. This would be like, good for I, the kids. I get what you're saying, you know? Gary, but I highly disagree. I just, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't think someone was thinking. I, no, actually, I do think someone was thinking. Someone was thinking, like Jeff said, we're at a fair. Mm -hmm. So what's the fun little fair food that everyone loves? Cotton candy. What's the fair food that people don't normally think of? Jerky. Someone did the fusion so, dance, and suddenly we got cotton candy turkey. And like, so is this confusing for keto people because it's jerky <laughs> and you're thinking that it's like protein, but it says it's flavored like cotton candy? So, my question is, like, what's the sugar content in it? Right. Like, is it really misleading? Because people might be like, oh, I can have jerky that tastes like cotton candy. Like, I can have something sweet, but it's actually, like, keto-friendly. Notably, well, they don't advertise it that way, because I think there's probably a bunch of sugar in it. It's got to be sugary. Yeah, well, I mean, this is like candy jerky, except specifically, it's it's like, <laughs> you know candy jerky, right? It's basically jerky that they, they or actually, I think it's more candied bacon. Yeah, uh, I get what you then, mean. Then jerky, but um, but it's basically candied coated. Yeah. This yeah. is the same thing, except using taking cotton candy, melting it down, and yeah, like yeah. This, coating the this falls, This falls in like a really weird realm for me, like of like flavors that should never ever be together. Mm. Yes, yeah, somehow they are, and here we are. I just hope it. I hope they have like a small batch set where it's like, "Hey, we want some because we just want to try." It. Yeah, not as a novelty. Right. Uh, yeah. I no, can see I that. So this is like on the food crime radar. I don't think this is a fruit food crime. I think. I think it. <laughs> I think it's not guilty on that. It's just bad. It's a bad idea. Yeah, that's fair. Mm -hmm. But not sometimes novelty is good. This is not. This, this is not good novelty. No. This re this makes me think I'm going to see this in a discount store, like in a year in a markdown bin. Cotton candy, like flavored beef jerky. Like it's just not going to sell. It's not going to be a thing. This is an item just... at Dollar Tree that's only a, only like a nickel. <laughs> Damn. Although due to inflation, it's probably a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> but still <sighs> yeah be at the dollar store for a quarter like, <laughs> like that. that's what you know it's bad yeah yeah but All again right, so i don't think up, it's a food crime just this bad no. yeah no i agree all right, so next up is Old Fashioned Sipper Club is the vendor and they have something they're calling the Ferris Mule which is a which is kind of a punny name because at fairs there's typically a ferris wheel and then there's a, a drink called the moscow mule this one however is a non-alcoholic mule so it's made with fresh blackberries ginger beer freshly squeezed lime juice and agave nectar handshaken poured over ice garnished with fresh blackberries rosemary sprig lime wheel uh summer classic drink that elevates with a twist i like this i i personally love mules like alcoholic and non-alcoholic but i liked the whimsy of this and i was like imagining myself at the fair and it's like 85 plus degrees probably an overcast slash sunny day because i'm there um and i would find this refreshing like i would you know, see the vendor and be like, ooh, that really would probably hit the spot. Right. I like it. And if I was a dirty ven like attendee, I would have a little bottle that I would have hidden in my backpack. <laughs> I would 
drop a little, drop a little, yeah. <laughs> well, I, little I, think this is, in it. I think this is also like the mom, dad, kids, kids go up, they want a refreshing beverage, they order and they order their mules and then then says, hey, would you like a mule? Yes, I would love it. And then you give him a Ferris mule. And just don't tell him it's not alcoholic. Yeah. I mean, that is fair. I mean, this particular vendor has other items, craft cocktails, specialty beers, uh, domestic beers, water, Sprecker's root beer. Mm. People, if you have never had Sprecker's root beer, you haven't lived. It's, it's to me, one of the best, like, home-crafted, U.S.-based um, root beers. Uh, so if you like root beers, I suggest you, like, if you can seek it out, try it out. Um, but they also have shakes, malts, and, and lemonade. So, yeah, they've got, a, they've got a variety of beverages. It's all their focus. But I agree with you, Jeff, that, like, it could be a way to give the kids something that isn't quite what the adults are having, but very similar. And, and because of the name, they'd be like, ooh, I'm having a Having fancy drink? All you really <laughs> having is a what we may call a spritzel, spritzer, mm-hmm. virgin cocktail. Somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. All right. All right so next right, up, I think we got a thumbs up on that one. Yeah, yeah. Slim McGinn's Irish Pub is the vendor, and they have something they're calling the Irish Dipper. Okay. So, uh, it says this delicious new Irish onion dip is made with cream cheese, Guinness beer, caramelized onions, and Irish cheddar, then layered within with classic Irish beef and Guinness gravy on a French roll to create a flavor bomb sandwich that will make everyone happy. Served with a souffle cup of Guinness gravy for dipping. That's how you get the dipper. Mm-hmm. It's because the sandwich not only has Irish onion dip in it, but then you dip it in the gravy. So I guess huh. it's the Irish take on like an au jus beef dip. Yeah. A French dip. Yeah. Right, like a French dip or, and or a Philly steak kind of concept. Like, yeah. It's all the same thing. So I'm very curious before I kind of give my opinion, but the two of you think about this as a, as a thing. Uh, right. I'm not a fan of Guinness as a beer, just like to drink, okay. but it like cooking it in it something. I'm, I'm for it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm similar to Jeff. I'm not the biggest fan of Guinness as a, a drink, but I think this this sounds tasty. Um, it it again, it doesn't sound portable. It does feel like this is a sit down yeah. like Dunkaroo situation kind of feeling, and and I'm not hating on it. I think it would be an interesting flavor. Um, Onion dip and caramelized onions aren't always my thing, but I have a feeling if I read this recipe to Jim, Jim would love this, and I could probably like we would maybe share it. Our yeah. So this is how I feel about it. I think if my food buddy Drew and I were together, we would get one and we would share it. And if it's that good, one of us would go back and get another one. That we would share the second one too, and in essence, have one a piece. Right. But like, like it's 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 experimental enough. It's mm-hmm. a new thing enough that I'm really super intrigued. Yeah. But I'm imagining this is probably a ten, twelve, or fifteen dollar item. Probably like, because it's a sandwich. Is it and most it's things not. at a state fair? Well, <laughs> right. Like so, state fair food is already escalated in price, but we've got. You know, the classic Irish beef in Guinness. Like, there's so many things that are, like, just dollar signs mm-hmm. as ingredient kind of stuff. And I'm like, okay, this might be a pricey item that would make me be a little shy 
to just get on my own, but I realize if I'm with somebody and they're willing to split it with me, mm-hmm. then I would be I would be willing to go in on it. And then if it is really that good, if it's if it's like giving me the sensation of a pot roast sandwich, right? Then I could see myself like wanting more than just like a half a sandwich. Maybe, because Maybe yeah. like at a state fair, there are times you're walking around the place, but you're walking and walking and walking and walking. Sometimes you want to want to take some time off your feet. This right. is the perfect thing. They probably have picnic tables around where, where their booth mm-hmm. is. You can sit down, have a conversation, relax, yeah. and enjoy a sandwich. So yeah. the whole portability thing, I can understand it, but I think this is one of the points where you're having your break from walking around the fair. And yeah. Sit down oh, yes, food. definitely. I'm looking at the picture of the, the location. Um, they're definitely a, like, they have outdoor seating and they have, like, a bar. And it looks like they have a little um, upstairs balcony, like, sitting area. So this is definitely, like you said, Jeff, like a sit down, like, we're going to sit and eat and relax our feet or take a break or... Um, um, chill and have a conversation. Now, I will say this: looking at the vendors' menu, Drew and I would most definitely stop here um, <laughs> because they've got several things that are tripping my trigger uh, in different ways. Reuben rolls, basically Reuben uh, style egg rolls. I've had them before; they're very yummy. So that would probably pull me in. Um, and then they've got a, a series of like different coffee-based drinks that I could probably see pulling Drew in a little bit. Um, the Irish beef and blue chips would probably <laughs> like pull Drew in. Um, I'm not a blue cheese fan, so like that or the blue cheese chips wouldn't really get me. Um, but see, what I I w- really wish for those blue cheese chips is if chips was uh, the uh, uh, British version of chips, like uh, steak fries. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they do have a Guinness Irish onion dip and chips. So to me, I can see where the where the Irish dipper sandwich. Like they're just pulling all of their variable kind of ingredients together to make a sandwich. But I think it works. It's it's not freaking me out. Oh, the Irish beef and cheddar chips again. Uh, 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 steak fries or just french fries in general. Yeah. They also have shepherd's pie, which if you're into casserole things, that, that probably also <laughs> fits. So, yeah. I think you're muted, Damon. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your lips moving and I was like, I don't know if he's t- trying to say anything. To the VDD. I was, and yeah, like I said, like Jim and I would probably this, like you, Drew, like you and Drew, we would probably see this place and be like, let's give this a try. Yeah. Yeah. What some of these places need is like a sampler platter. <laughs> <laughs> so Jeff would like the twenty dollar. I get, uh, I get a, I get two bites of everything on your menu, kind of. <laughs> yeah, and you share it with somebody, ten bucks each, yeah. and it's essentially a meal. Okay, what makes sense? Oh, what is this? All right, so this is misleading, I think, and it's from yes. Camp Bar, and it's called the Porky. So I'm thinking bacon, mm-hmm. something along those lines, and it's this Sunday. Yes, you heard that right. Is a treat for you to enjoy while at the pig races. Featuring vanilla custard layered with cheesecake bites and hot fudge. The porky is topped with graham cracker crust, more hot fudge, warm caramel, a graham cracker cookie, and a cherry. But it wouldn't be complete without a piece of Rapina's candied bacon dipped in chocolate and rolled in sprinkles. So there you have your 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 pork in the monks. But is i'm guessing the camp bar where this is from uh is right next to the pig races or something 
Yeah, like I, that's the impression that I get based on their description. Oh, good lord! So they're doing something in honor of the races so they created it Sunday. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's a little deceptive, right? Because I thought this was like a sandwich. Same. Like I hear the porky, and I'm like, "Ooh, that sounds like a sandwich or a wrap or a something." Like, yeah. And it's not that at all. It's a Sunday. Uh huh. So, David, you had a, you had a physical reaction. You were waving this your arms around. <laughs> sounds delicious. <laughs> the name okay. is misleading, but my mouth watered as I as you like as I was listening to this because this just sounds really good, like custard and caramel and hot fudge and graham cracker, and then like you add all this like candy bacon to just like give it like a a yeah, like it's it's. This would not be a. I'm not sitting and eating this by myself. Absolutely not. This That's is fair. It kind of looks small uh, in the picture as a serving size. Yeah, yeah, but I think it's a little rich. Yeah, it's very rich. But um, it, it, it made me, it made me happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like like to, like if I was obviously doing the the food trip with a with Drew like we would probably share this like and then critique the shit out of it um and and not in a bad way but like you know the it's one of those like hmm this is a very interesting combination of things and then to wrap it up with a candy bacon dipped chocolate like yeah uh thing I'm like hmm okay yeah interesting that 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 is intriguing. We got sugar, sugar cream, bitter, uh, vanilla, sugar, sugar. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of sugar. I will give it that much. Um, so I, yeah, I would say based on how it's presented, for me, it's probably like a like a it, it's a three, maybe a four. I I can't go all the way to a five because I really have to taste it. I'm just not. Yeah, Can three and a half. Yeah, you know, it's 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 above average. Yeah, I would probably go. I would probably go average though. Three and a half, four. Yeah. I would probably no. I'd probably go three. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna three, read three the and, and just say three. Yeah, it just, just I, be I, like I feel name deceptive and a lot. <laughs> A lot it of flavors. Like a, it feels like a lot. That's the yeah. thing. For even sure. even for I'm guessing this is probably a small cup. Uh-huh. Um, in, uh huh. Um. In addition, sure it would probably also it depend on the price. Yeah. Mmm. That's fair. Yeah. Like if I'm getting a small cup of shit and this is like ten dollars, <laughs> I'm like, um, right. I'll I have. was just gonna say because I'm because I I think we're all on the cheaper end of like our our spending. I would say six. Maybe seven, but then once we start, I agree with you. Once we start creeping towards ten, I'm like, mm, no, I'm out. Like, like I realize that there's bacon, but I don't think it's worth that. Yeah. Nope. 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 Okay. Okay. All right. So, of Wait. course, we could not go to the Wisconsin State Fair without going to Mexico. Having right <laughs> <laughs> because without. It... Direct, right, without, directly in our route to to <laughs> Wisconsin is Mexico. Right. So we go to the Mexican grill vendor to get the Wisconsin quesadilla. Now, I will admit, this one really kind of drew me in because I was like, ooh, I love quesadillas. Quesadillas are fun. Soft taco-y, like kind of tortilla deal, mm -hmm. crisped up a little bit, stuffed with shit, right? So yeah. stuffed full of Cheese curds, chunks of brats, grilled onions and peppers, shredded cheese, and then cooked a golden brown perfection served with sour cream and salsa on the side. So I, I would like to comment that I think their sexies are much better than the the, the taco, taco <laughs> was. Um, one also, uh, two also, they have basically melted cheese curds into it because I mean, obviously, they put it into it, they probably put it into some sort of press, uh, um, right? And smash it down, melts the cheese curds, so you still get kind of the the 
uh, squeakiness texture, but it's not in the curdy shape necessarily, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, which glues everything together, just like if you were just using regular shredded shred cheese, but probably better even. I think, I think cheese cards might be a better cheese glue. That's a really weird thing. <laughs> but you know what I mean. <laughs> Adhesive? Yeah, better? I mean, well, the, I they're using both. So I think they've resolved the issue about Oh, like the cheese curd right. thing that we talked about with the taco. Right. So right. I think you're right, Jeff. Like I think by pressing it, it will help melt the cheese curd a little bit. But the shredded cheese also provides a little bit of that glue. Um, like, and I like the fact, like I'm a sour cream person. So like, so I like that it comes with sour cream on the side. Mm-hmm. The fact that it also has salsa is as lightly intriguing to me because I get it. It's a quesadilla. Yeah. But there isn't anything else about this that... <laughs> There is anything scream. like right. There's there's nothing Mexican about this other, other than that. It's a quesadilla. Like hey, yeah. yeah, I do like how they say chunks uh, chunks of brats, and it mm-hmm. looks very much like they took it out of its casing. And, yeah, and I agree. It like that, so it's really using the brat worst meat uh, versus the link, yeah. which wasn't it. Which might really be the case of the taco, but it, the way they described it sounds like they just took a link and cut in cut pieces it. yeah right and that's where again like I, I i like this this one is better than the taco from earlier mm-hmm. like i will 100 percent say this this is actually beats and bounds this is that good middle zone between my burrito idea and the hard taco that we had it's just a nice little fun middle place for it i like this um i don't think i would order it but I like this. I would totally order this. I would probably order it. Now, if you look at their vendor menu, the quesadillas is one of their things. So they have a buffalo mac and cheese quesadilla. Uh Uh-oh, hold on. A cowboy quesadilla, which is um, shredded barbecue chicken with corn and black beans. Um, They also have a garlic parm quesadilla, a pizza dealia, and an ultimate breakfast quesadilla. Which is scrambled eggs, bacon, sausage, ham, hash browns, lots of cheese, topped with sausage gravy. And I'm, I'm, sh- I'm like how Damon was like. <laughs> I'm, looking, I, I'm, I was looking at because they have the, the first picture is it's a picture of the menu and it has the prices listed. I was trying to get a glimpse. Of oh, it. that's what you were doing. I was like, I know Jeff. Da- both of us saw Damon like looking like the dog who's up in the, the second. <laughs> Like, just, like, sticking his nose up there. I was like, dang, okay. But now I get it. Yeah, you're trying to see what the... Yeah. The pricing is. Um, that hurt a little bit. Uh, nothing is over... Nothing it, is $10 or above. Yeah, it's looking very single. Like, burritos are listed at 8 Yeah. Uh. Yeah, so I'm going to say everything's, like, a six ninety nine seven ninety nine range. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Zoom and enhance. <laughs> oh, is this where they have the walking? Yep, it looks like it. Yeah, 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 the yeah. Walking banana explosion. That's where it was here. Okay. And I think we talked about that last year. I think so. Yeah. I'm gonna have so to... the walking banana explosion, for those that don't know, is a bag of Nilla wafers, which are basically um, vanilla, sh- slightly shortbread cookies. Um, it comes with vanilla pudding, sliced bananas, a nutty bar, finished with whipped cream and a cherry for a reinvention of a, the banana dessert. And it's in the bag. Yeah. Yes. So. so it's like it's like a dessert version of a walking taco concept. Only, yeah, they're using uh, cookies instead of like, you know, uh, what is it, Fritos or Doritos? Fritos. So... Like to me, this is this is a vendor I would probably stop at um, for a couple of reasons. They also make, uh, I think, is it where's it at? Where's it at? Where's it at? So they make, um, according to the picture, they make lemon shakeups. So they're kind of like a lemonade, um, aqua fresca type deal. They're not listed on the the menu, but they do have a virgin strawberry daiquiri. So I think like I w- I would be like, ooh, I could get something refreshing, 
And then I, as I'm reading the menu, I see food items that really intrigue me. So yeah, we've got lemon shakeups, which in, flavors include strawberry and lemon, lime lemon, raspberry lemon, and uh, peach lemon. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. So yeah, yeah I like this the the quesadilla. I, I think this would be really good. I'm unsure about some of the other ones. Like the pizza dia, dilla, the the. Um, it's not a dilla. It's all dia. Pizza dia. Um, the garlic parm quesadilla sounds gross to me. I think that for you it's too much. Yeah, yeah. It's because because it sounds very tasty to me. Um, oh, no. But I I think it's oh, probably no, a lot and probably a oh, little God. too much for you, which is fair. Okay, by the way. Okay, but yeah, it does have it white queso with... in the mac and cheese. Yeah, that's the thing. If it had just been like white queso, mm -hmm. better. White queso mac and cheese that's carb heavy. That's getting really really carby, and <laughs> it sounds delicious to me. Yeah, not so much to me. But anyway, with that being said. I the, the, thing about, the thing about like fair that. foods you, you have to remember is if you're on a diet, <laughs> don't go to a state fair, period. <laughs> if you go to a state fair, it's your cheat day and eat whatever the fuck you want. That's the tea. <laughs> but, if you, but if you're not going to cheat on your diet, you don't want to break your diet, you've got, you're on a diet, don't go to a state fair. Just don't go. I mean, it would be fair to to like go to for an event, but yeah. don't stay and don't eat at the fair because none of the foods at a fair is diet worthy. Period. You might be able to get a salad. <laughs> and I mean, getting then. a salad, getting a salad at a fair, that's weird. That's like well, if I you're mean, getting that to accompany something, sure. But if that's what if you're you... going to eat, that's just weird. Well, I mean, even if you went to the vegan vendor, I'm looking around and it's like they've got a vegan brat slider, vegan corn dogs, vegan fried pickles, vegan deep fried Oreos. Like, like I'm like fat, 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 like, fat, fat, calories, fat. calories, calories, calories. Like there's like, sure, it might be vegan, but it's still. <laughs> You're still going to get fat. Like you still going to be fatty. Like, sorry. Sorry about it. But yeah, I. To be, oh, to be fair, just because you're vegan doesn't mean you're on a diet you're just true you just don't true. Need i like the idea from... i agree with you jeff like if i were going at all um i'm going to i'm going to be this is going to be a, i wouldn't call it a cheat day but this is going to be an indulging day like i'm gonna like enjoy something <laughs> to make it uh, to make the day sound better than a cheat day, yeah we're yeah. gonna call it an indulging day yeah Indulgence. I'm gonna have yeah. some indulgences. It's like, literally the same thing. I know, but I feel better about it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me have my moment. Let me feel better about the fact that I'm gonna eat a bunch of like carby sweet shit. Like, <laughs> like well, I mean, me... is it the point of going to the fair to like see several things? Some of them being the Bubba Daddies and like trying the food, like you know the stroller meat. Um, I mean, like, there's <laughs> maybe riding a ride, you know, like the stroller daddy. <laughs> well, hey, how many tickets for that? <laughs> you shit, never mind. Certainly we're full of See, and I told you this one was better. You must be this tall uh, to ride. Okay, you're right. you're. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Need to okay. be this long to ride. Anyways. <laughs> Anybody who happens to go to the Wisconsin State Fair, feel free to report back to us. Uh -huh. Let us know what you tried, what was your favorite, what you enjoyed. We'd be really interested to know because obviously we've expressed our opinions on just some of the items that are foods that are going to be at the fair this year. Um and that's not even all of the new foods. There's there's several other things, and some of them are quite traditional. Um, that's kind of why you know we didn't go through all like four dozen of them or whatever because that would have been yeah. a lot. Um, so yeah, 
This was a good. Certain. This was a good mix of foods, and I liked it. I'm hungry now, but I know. <laughs> That's the downside to doing a Let's Talk About Food show. Everybody gets hungry. Hmm. Yep, this was a continuation. So I played the the uh, uh, Let's Talk About Food intro in the last show. So I didn't think I'd have to do this time. Right. So uh, what do you think of these foods? Uh, uh, tell, us, tell us what you think, because... Uh, we would like to hear. And if you do go to the Wisconsin State Fair afterwards, uh, let try these things and let us know. Even the stuff you, we gave a, a downer on, just because it's downer to us, to me it's down to you. You do you, boo. Okay? <laughs> Enjoy what you'd like. Okay? What was your opinion? Obviously, it's all opinion, so we don't have to agree. But you can do that several ways, which includes uh, going to our website, CubsOutLoud.com, and commenting in on the blog. Uh, or uh, shoot us an email at CubsOutLoud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail at 361-C-WILL-TALK. That's 361-265-8255. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube at CubsOutLoud in the appropriate place of the URL. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey, that's another good place where you can comment about any of these. This is on the YouTube video for the show. You can also join our on for our chat at bit.ly slash telegram dash col if you'd like to see when we're planning and recording these shows you can check out our google calendar at bit.ly slash calendar dash col if you would like to get various accoutrements such as a made to be uh one of our brand spanking new uh next generation shirts or a consent is my foreplay shirt just as examples we do that over in Zazzle, zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. And they have sales and discounts all the time. So check it out. Uh, some of those designs were designed by Smashy. You can find more of his work at tpublic.com slash user slash Smashy the Bear. You can also support us by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Or send us a donation at paypal.me slash Cubs Out Loud. Drives to us on Google Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Amazon Audible, a uh, whole bunch of plethora of different platforms. Uh, please rate, review us uh, there. Uh, the more people that rate and review us, the more we get up in the algorithm, the more people will find us. Share the love. You can find me anywhere in the internet as Box, at Box, Puppy, Box, Cup, Box, something or other, if I'm even there. Damon! If you wish to get in touch with me, you can find me at theatercub79, that's T-H-E-A-T-R-E-C-U-B-7-9. Uh, most bear-related sites are on Facebook, or you find me as pup underscore umber on Twitter. The Twitter is definitely not safe for work. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can pretty much find me anywhere online as GearBear73. And with that, take it out, everybody! Good night, everybody! <laughs> Have a good one, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>